Do you feel the tension? Do you? Do you feel the grind? Do you see the battle between this flesh and soul of mine? Because there's a war inside of me between who I am and who I want to be. I ask you to give me a little bit of latitude this morning. I got off a bus at 2 o'clock here Monday afternoon, and by 2.30 I was in my office with Five people didn't go home until 7.30. There's a lot of stuff happening here right now. This will line up with what the text says, though, so don't worry about that. There's a story about the two wolves. Has anyone ever heard the story of the two wolves? Bless you, a couple people I saw, like maybe three hands. There's two wolves, right? And his grandfather was talking to his grandson, talking about these two wolves that live, with, live within him, right? The grandfather. That there's these two wolves that are constantly fighting inside of me to have control over what's going to happen in my life. One of them is anger and hate and bitterness. And the other one is love and kindness and humility. They're constantly at war inside of us. It's the thing that Paul talked about in Romans, how we are both saint and sinner. We're constantly sanctified by God and at the same time turning away from what God is calling us to do. There's a war inside each and every one of us. And the grandson looked at the grandfather and he said, Grandfather, which wolf will win? My grandfather said, The wolf that you feed. If you live your life in such a way that you hate others or you're bitter towards others or you just don't have disdain for the world, that's the wolf that's going to grow. Hatred and bitterness and misunderstanding. If you love everyone around you and you show kindness to people that you see and you're humble in the things that you do, that's what's going to happen in your life. The first thing that I read for you this morning was a song by one of my, this beginning of a song by one of my favorite artists called Todd Agnew, and it's called The War Inside, right? I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I mean. I end up chasing all of my nightmares and abandoning all my dreams. You see, this morning's text is about testing of spirits, and all of this book of 1 John, as I said two weeks ago when we started this, is about conflict. The, the community that John is writing this letter to is in conflict. People are leaving. People aren't understanding what's happening. People are doing all sorts of things that we shouldn't be doing. And last week we heard about how we, the focus of that chapter, or that ending of chapter 1 and beginning of chapter 2 was all about how every last one of us is a sinner. That's the right hand. To make sure I'm holding up the right hand. Every last one of us is sinful. Every last one of us has done something wrong. And when we say that we don't have anything wrong in our lives, then that makes us say that God is wrong. Right? Bill said that if you're writing a book on sin, that he wanted three chapters, I want six. Because if all of you knew everything that I had done in my life, you wouldn't want me standing before you. There's people in this congregation I know that have done terrible things that they don't want anybody else sitting next to them to know about. And you know what? That's why we're all here. Because every last one of us has done stuff that we don't want anybody else to know about. We want to keep hidden away in our closets and we don't want anybody to come in there and look around and start dusting things off or opening doors where they don't belong. Right? I want to keep those things secret. But are they a secret? They're not a secret to God. God already knows what you did. And what did God do? He sent His Son so that you could have a relationship with Him. In spite of what you've done. You see, every last one of us has done stuff that we don't want other people to know about. And every last one of us looks on other people and judges them. We all do that. But what happens actually when we judge other people, right? We start pointing fingers. I've said this in here quite a few times actually. When we start pointing fingers, what happens? We hurt people. You hurt people, but what else happens? 
Take a look at this, right? If I'm pointing my finger over here, and I don't mean to point my finger at you guys. You just have to be sitting in the wrong seat this morning. I point my finger this way, I'm pointing one away from me, and how many back at myself? Three. The Bible doesn't say don't judge. Do not judge unless you are ready to be judged by the same standard by which you are judging. Right? And this morning's text talks about testing spirits. There's a lot of stuff flying around here the past few weeks because of the, the resignations that we've had on staff. And some of it has to do with stuff that happened that didn't actually happen. And there's things spreading around out there that don't need to be spreading around out there. And this morning's text talks about how we're supposed to test every spirit and make sure that it is actually the spirit of God that is giving us this information. How many of you have heard something before in the world that's not true? Right? The big, big thing now is, and I think it's actually on the bulletin cover, it says fake news, right? It's all about fake news. It's not fake news, it's just bad information, right? And when we believe bad information, we spread bad information. And when we spread bad information, it changes, right? How many of you have played the game Telephone? It's not the same by the end of it. I could start something over here with Jeffrey, and by the time I got over here, you're, you're not going to know. It's, it's not going to be the same, right? It's going to change. Because we take what we think we heard or what we think we know and we spread it around. And we're not supposed to do that. Because then people get hurt. And we're not showing love. The other reason I wanted the, the kids, the youth, to wear these shirts this morning is so you would know who went on this trip so that you could actually ask them. Some of you received postcards. Thank you, those of you that actually donated money to help to send these kids to Houston. You didn't get one? You should have. Hopefully, man, I got lost in the mail. But I know I've sent 17 postcards twice, so you should have gotten postcards. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you should have gotten two postcards. But these are the people that, these are some of the people that would have written those postcards to you. And I want everyone here to ask one of these young people, including Jeffrey. He's not wearing his own shirt, but it's, he, he went. He, he, he can answer these questions, too. Ask them something about what they heard last week. Ask them something about the hope that they witnessed. The hope that they witnessed as people bared their souls on a stage in front of 31,000 people. How a 12-year-old girl ignited gathering of 31,000 people on fire for justice. How a man who is now a pastor was told by one of his former pastors that he was going to go to hell. One of the talks was by, by a pastor named Will Starkweather, and he was cutting himself. <clears throat> he went to go talk to his pastor about it, and his pastor said four, he said, Will said, I did. My pastor said four words to me. You're going to hell. And that's hard because there are people in this room that have done that. And if you don't know the person in this room that's done that, you know somebody in your life that has done that. Or something just like that. And when a person goes to somebody to bury their soul and try to, to get help for where they're at, Telling them that they're going to hell is not the right thing to do. Whether in or not we think that it's right, whether, whether in or not it is, it is right, that's not the right thing to say. So he left the church. And he went on to talk more about his, his journey and his understanding and how he went to college and he found a new church and then he, he bared his soul to that pastor and that pastor said four words to him. Our youth took nothing else out of these five, four days, five days we were in Houston listening to these talkers. Speakers. Boy. <laughs> I need sleep. If they got nothing else, and if you get nothing else out of this morning, I want you to get these four words. Because this is, what, this is where God is at. This is where God meets every last one of us. 
The four words that the second pastor said to Will was, there's grace for that. You know what? Because every last one of us is a sinner. And every last one of us has done things wrong. And every last one of us has said things and spread things that aren't true. There's grace for that. Because that's what God does. God's not in the damning business. God's in the redeeming business. It's about him taking our lives where it's at and us sitting down and listening to where someone at, just like I told the, the youth, the kids up here, right? Listening to someone's story and understanding where they're at and what they're, what's happening in their lives and journeying along with them. Not telling them that what they're doing is wrong, not telling them that what they're, that what they're doing is going to be hurtful to them or maybe somebody else, but trying to understand where they're at and showing them God's love and grace through the actions that are happening. That's not to say that everybody's actions are always right and always 100% correct, right? Because we know people that have made bad choices. But that doesn't mean that there's still not grace for that. So test the spirits. Don't spread rumors. And understand that God loves each and every one of us just as much as he loves the person that you don't think he does. Because we've all done bad things. But thanks be to God, our redemption doesn't rely on what I do. It's all because God loves me. And if I confess to him the things that I'm doing wrong in my life, he is going to forgive me. That's what it said in the text last week that Bill preached on to you all. So listen to what's happening. Discern through God what the truth is. And only share that. And remember that God loves you beyond all of your imagination. And no matter what you've done, there's always grace for that.